You know, I have to be honest, I don't really have a lot to say about this one. It's an interesting episode, and we're getting back to a plot that doesn't feel like it was written for three-year-olds, but most of the comments I have are about Maul and, char- and his character in specific. So we all know that coincidences are just kind of a thing in Star Wars. But no, it's the will of the Force. It's not coincidences. Yeah, I know, I've heard it all before. All I'm saying is that coincidences are leaned on a little too heavily in this franchise, and let's just move on from that. I mean, Maul and Savage in a basically functionless life pod, escape pod, being found by the Death Watch. No hyperspace, by the way, so they have to be very, very close, galactically speaking, to the planet that they escaped from, the pirate planet. So what the hell the Death Watch is even doing there, I don't know, but whatever. So Maul and Savage get up, and they're like, all right, we want to work something out. Who are you? You hate Kenobi? Oh, how coincidental. We hate Kenobi, too. Let's destroy them together. I I find Maul's negotiating tactics funny, and this is the bulk of what I have to say about this episode. Maul has certainly learned his Sith lessons relatively well, because Maul has learned how to demonstrate strength. I am in charge. I am the Alpha. You are not, therefore you are not in charge and not the Alpha. Everything he does is like that. He uh, he values the proper usage of intimidation. Probably my favorite aspect of this is when they go to Black Sun. Quick aside, woo, Black Sun, even though they're this dinky little organization, but I don't know, maybe they haven't gotten big yet? I don't know. Filoni was really big about pulling EU elements into these series, so it wouldn't surprise me if this is mostly just him trying to stretch things out a little bit. They even have the same logo. I think also the, the group of princes they encounter with are all Faleen, too, although I could be wrong about that. Anyways, so notice what Maul does in this whole thing. He's got his hands behind his back, and he just kind of exudes this sort of calm. He doesn't yell. He doesn't gesticulate. And even when he finally ends up having this whole situation dealt with, he doesn't do anything. All of this is to demonstrate that he is above all this, that he is the superior, he is the one in charge, and he is the one who wishes to have his, you know, the, their loyalty. And then when Savage kills them all, he says, oh, I suppose the choice is now yours as to whether or not to join us. He actually does a very good job of intimidating and displaying strength. The problem is he has absolutely no subtlety, no capacity for manipulation, negotiation, or diplomacy. I've actually already commented on this, his total lack of leadership skills. This is what really distinguishes Maul from Palpatine. Maul, of course, certainly knows how to do some of the game, but he is a complete amateur compared to someone who's been playing the game for decades at this point. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. So then he immediately goes out of his way to basically do the exact same thing to his closest ally and supporter, uh, Bob Face, I can't remember his name, the leader of Death Watch, Jackass. And... He just alienates him as a consequence and pushes him further away. Of course, both Maul and Jackass are actually plotting against each other, so I suppose it's kind of a moot point anyways. I just found the whole thing fascinating. I also find it almost amusing how quickly Maul puts together his little criminal conglomerate. And in fact, if anything, I find myself wondering why no one else has done this before. Like someone who already has a tremendous amount of power and influence within the underworld. Like the Hots. In fact, one of the only things I liked about this... I I shouldn't say that. I I didn't like this episode. But one of the only things I find amusing about his path to power is the one group that really resists him are the Huts. And in fact, for the most part, I actually can buy most of what they do. Hear me out. So obviously the Huts are like, yeah, no, dude, we're not fighting you. And they have already come prepared with some of the best bounty hunters in the galaxy at the time. Would have been nice to see Boba there, but whatever. Uh, you know, we recurring bounty hunters that we've already seen before. I was actually worried they were going to die my first time seeing this because, you know, non, non-original trilogy characters, they can die. Anyway, so we've got the bounty hunters. We've got a whole group of armed forces. We've got a trap ready for them. If anything, the trap wasn't as perfect as it should have been. I would have had a freaking turret pop out and just start shooting them. It's not like they couldn't still have survived that if they had their sabers out. But anyways... So then they're like, all right, so you're going to join us now. And I I did love the little bit. Maul's like, so the only thing you can tell me is that Jabba is at Jabba's palace. 
But then they go to Jabba himself. Now, Jabba's been one of the biggest mover and shakers of the huts in basically each of the continuities, pretty much throughout most of that particular chunk of history. So the idea that Jabba would be the one who could actually speak for the entire hut clans makes a degree of sense at this point in history, despite the fact that in the EU he was actually ostracized, but he still had the kind of power and influence to do that. Thing is, Jabba then capitulates, but that makes perfect sense. Jabba knows how to read the, read, the, read the room. And he looks at the situation like, okay, so this is a bunch of brute force idiots who are making a quick, obvious power grab. They're going to fail. There are bigger, older, and wiser entities in there. And I'm going to go ahead and just join them because that's the safe thing to do. It'll prevent more damage to my, me and my operations. And if and when they eventually self-destruct, we'll be good. I wouldn't be surprised if Jabba pretty much immediately turned around and was like, Hey, Count Dooku. Uh, you buying information right now? Because I got some for you. He might even turn to the Republic if he felt like it. Although, obviously, in this particular continuity, Jabba didn't really have a good reputation or connection with the Republic, so maybe not. But my point being, what Jabba did is legitimately the smart thing to do. I think that's one of the reasons why he's so amused when he does it. Anyways. <clears throat> so then we find out at the end of the episode that, gasp, both the Twitch Doth Death Watch guy and Maul are plotting against each other, and soon they will kill each other, and blah, 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 blah. What I find really strange is, near as I can tell, Maul is planning to betray them for no real reason. And the Death Watch guy is planning to betray them because Maul was rude to him. Near as I can tell, that's, that's the motivations on both sides. What? Regardless, we'll see how this continues, and hopefully we'll have something more interesting to talk about next time. Thank <sighs> you.